All right, I found my very first cannoli of the morning. And he's doing the squirrel thing, where it's like, as long as I'm on the opposite side of you, on this, this column, then I'm safe. But yeah, here is another green anoli. They are everywhere, but I absolutely think they're adorable. And I think they give the best side eye. Look at him. He's like, yeah, you're not gonna get me. Look at those long toes. You have such long toes, my little friend. Look at you, buddy. So yeah, there we go. What a way to start the morning. Looking for the first anoli to share the day with. How fun. There he is! Do you guys see him? He's way up above me. Little tiny anoli. First anoli of the day. But hey everybody! Day four! So today we are going to be signing up for the Ibis Sanctuary Tour and hopefully the Bald Head Island After Dark Tour. Look at him move around on the column. That is so cool. But yeah, so those are both like at 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. So hopefully we'll be able to go on those. There's a chance that it might rain later today, so I'm not sure if they'll cancel it because the rain might come. You know, you want to be safe. But more of Chips' family is going to be arriving today, so we should have a really good time just showing off what we've seen. And I know Chips wants to go and look at those little fiddler crumbs again, so I think we're going to have a great time. I know we're going to have a great time. We're going to search for all sorts of adventures. It's really fun. Oh my goodness, that bee came so close to my ear. Oh, that startled me. Did it you a little on the light? No, he's good. He's good. But yeah, so, all right, another day of adventure. This morning I woke up with a teeny bit of a fever, which is to be expected, being me. And uh, I took some medicine to hopefully counteract that. No, stay with me, my little friend. We're starting the morning together. And so that's just kind of like another one of those behind-the-scenes realities of, yeah, like, yeah, there's stuff going on, and I may not feel 100% all of the time, but I might have a lot of my dad and me, because I'm like, I'm just going to work through it right now, because I know I have a personality where I probably can just push myself through it, and I want to have adventure. So we're going to go hopefully find lots of adventure today. But don't worry, I have a wonderful, wonderful life mate, and Chips will definitely rein me in if it looks like I'm not feeling my best, and I need to relax, just like yesterday. So we'll get there. We'll find something cool. All right, bye, little morning Anoli. Say bye to everybody. He's just giving you guys side eye. <laughs> All right, and there's our second Anoli. Do you guys see it? They're really hard to spot. You have to look very carefully and honestly listening very closely, even over the hum and drone of the cicadas can really help. Hi, buddy. Whoop, where'd you go? There you are. Hi. You gonna run for it? Off we go. We're on the linoleum adventures. Did you disappear? Oh, there you are. Oh, other side of the tree now. Oh, who knows where? So I have a lot of people leaving comments like, Siri, how do you see all of those things? How do you see the anoles and the fiddler crabs and stuff like that? And honestly, it's my sense of hearing more than anything else. Listening very closely. And as soon as I think I hear it, like leaf litter rustle, you hold still and you look around. And if you look for just the slightest, tiniest movement or you let your eyes sort of slide over the forest floor until there's a gentle, subtle break in the leaves somewhere, then you can usually find something. It's really fun. Even if it's just like a squirrel or a cicada. There's a lot of cicadas in this little commons area this morning. But even if it's just them, it's really exciting because you used your senses to find them. So really, it's my sense of hearing usually catches something first. And then you hold completely still and you look around, and every now and then you might kind of like wiggle one foot to see if that startles anything. Usually the anoles, that's when they'll give themselves away. Startles anything into moving. I'm going to see what else we can find today. This is so exciting. Did you guys hear that? Very faint, very angry squirrel. There's lots of squirrels on the island too. 
it's really amazing to look behind me and see all of these palm fronds and just all of these gorgeous trees, these great, huge, giant island oaks. And to know I'm only three hours, two and a half to be exact, hours away from where I normally live in the middle of North Carolina. This is one of the most beautiful states I have ever been in in my entire life. And I am so grateful that I made the tremendously terrifying decision to move to North Carolina kind of on a, a whim in a way. I didn't really have a choice because I worked as a nanny and my job was moving to a new job herself so I needed to go with her and I remember thinking I'm leaving behind all of my friends and I'm leaving behind all of the things that I just started getting familiar with and that I love about like Kansas City area and I really was devastated for the first few months but it has changed my life to be here and I think it's partially not only the sheer beauty of this state and the fact you've got the beautiful mountains and you've got the beach to enjoy all in one but also that I just put myself out there and I was like I'm gonna have to just go find some reason to be happy <laughs> And I found them. I found chimps. I found the beautiful, beautiful forest. I found so much natural beauty here. And I absolutely love it. And it's amazing. But yeah, so, so far, pretty good start to the morning. We're taking it nice and easy, kind of slow. It really does look like it's probably going to rain today. So I'm not sure what that will do for the rest of our plans for the day. But hopefully that will clear up and we can go on our walks because there's Baldhead Island tour after dark tour and I really want to go on that and so does Chips because even if I can't record a lot of it because it'll be in the middle of like pitch black darkness, um, we're going to go look for alligators I think with flashlights to see if they can have their eyes reflect in the marshes and I think that would be amazing. So Chips wants to go do that and it's been a good morning. Uh, I usually do a lot of work while I'm waiting for him to wake up so I've been trying to catch up on my emails and we started at 300 and like 27 emails that I needed to catch up on when we got here and I think I just got it down to 299 so <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can work through all of my emails maybe catch up on Facebook messages and just in general come up with more things to do for the main channel and the vlog channel because the more I do this the more I'm out here looking for adventures to share with you guys the more I realize this is truly where I want to be not on an island that's really cool but I mean in the spirit of who Siri is and what she has to offer to everybody and what I can create to share with you guys and the way that my life is bigger because of sharing it with all of you and the way that so many hundreds of people send me messages saying that their lives feel bigger as a result of not only the specific adventures I go on but our community too and that's something amazing and precious and it requires a lot of behind the scenes organization and careful thought so I'm gonna go have another cup of peach tea and wait for chips to wake up and I might even open open up I might even open up the Welk egg case that I got so the egg cases I got in yesterday's vlog those might have itty bitty tiny baby seashells in them from Welks uh, that didn't quite make it so that's going to be very exciting and I'm going to head back to maybe open up that egg case while I wait for chips to get up and also go put bug spray on because I didn't put it on this morning and now I'm like watching these gigantic bees head my way and normally bees and I are friends but yeah I'm going to go get the bug spray now. There he goes, deeper under the forest. Talk about an exciting find though. I don't know what kind of sneak he is just yet but hopefully I'll find out for you guys by the time you guys see this video. Oh, can you see him move? Oh, there he goes, right there. You can see his scales as he's moving through the forest. Truly beautiful. I hear somebody. I'm really hopeful I might see somebody. The constant hunt. Way up there somewhere, I'm never gonna see him. Or I think that is the painted bunting. Oh, I wish I could remember my bird call spider. Oh, there goes the heron. Or that was actually an ibis, I think. Oh, so the hunt for the painted bunting continues. Oh, I'll find him eventually. Oh, you tell me what for. Is this your trail? Oh, no. look at him tell us all. Hey. Is this your spot? <laughs> yeah.
All right, so we're back at the Fiddler Crab spot because Chips is amazingly sweet and offered to bring me back here when it's just the two of us so that we can go a little bit slower and I can see if I can get some more. You can see I'm pushing through palm fronds. Some more really good Fiddler Crab action and hopefully maybe a painted bunting. We hear one right over there. I just haven't been able to get one like up close on camera yet, so we'll have to see if I can find one. He's currently off with the binoculars, hunting one out for me, while I pursue a bunch of fiddler crabs. Oh, and here he is. So let's see if we can find any. found one I'm pretty sure and it's so hard to see in the video that that is probably a juvenile uh, like a juvenile male or a female but that was a painted bunting and I'm very excited you can still hear her she flew too far into the thicket for me to be able to follow but you can still hear her calling and it's just so much fun to set out with nothing but a pair of binoculars, crossed fingers, and just having listened to the tune of the song again and again and again on the internet and go out to look for something. It's really fun. So I think Chips is currently scouting out some more buntings for me. So let's go see if we can find some more. And this little guy is what I call the garage anole, because every time I come through the fence to get back into the beach house, I see a little scuttering of a tail, and it's this little anole. Hi, garage anole, how are you? Don't worry, you're gonna be fine. I'm not gonna mess with you. I'll pretend you're invisible just like you want. All right, run for it, run for it. Chips is coming. He might get ya. You see him? He's cute. You guys look. So I think the owner of the property came by to chit chat with everybody and just make sure everything was okay, which is amazing because they're super friendly here. But he brought his dog. There are dogs everywhere on this island. It's like everybody has a puppy with them at all times. It's amazing. It's so cute. So this is for the sea turtle protection program and this is what the chicken wire that they put up over the sea turtle nest looks like and it is illegal to harass, molest, collect, or otherwise harm sea turtle eggs, hatchlings, and adults. And you will be, like, you'll get in huge trouble for that. So if you see these things, even though it's really fun to be like, oh my gosh, that's a sea turtle nest because they put them over the sea turtle nest, you don't mess with them. Just leave them be. <laughs> that's how the sea turtles are going to recover. But this is really fun. So what they'll normally do is they will dig into the sand around the eggs and then put this over the eggs and cover it back up with sand so that people don't know where it is and hopefully that way they won't mess with it but it'll also provide a little bit of protection from just the elements or people walking over it so the eggs don't get smooshed.
line just coming out front and there's a deer just walking across the street. That's amazing. So we just came back from the beach because there is a bit of a storm rolling in. Apparently there's a 100% chance of rain for an hour or two, but it should go away. And hopefully it'll go away in time for us to enjoy a birding tour that we're going to have at 6 p.m. tonight in the Ibis Sanctuary. And you are not allowed back there unless you uh, are with them. I think I've mentioned that a few times because we went back there just to see what it was like. And it is chain link fenced, like closed in. You are not allowed back there unless you're with the tour guides. And that's really cool. Oh my gosh, the Conservancy is amazing. It is my people! I was so excited to find people who are like me, who are just so passionately into nature. And we started swapping stories about what it's like to be an educator, when, like an environmental educator for kids, when you have a bunch of kids you're teaching. So immediately we're like, yeah, isn't it awful when they try to lick the snakes or like put the bone fragments in their mouth? And then you're trying to like handle the screaming child who's like, oh my gosh, is that really a skeleton? Oh my gosh! So it was real fun because it was like things that only the people from inside the trenches could understand but then still that rewarding excitement of what it's like to be an educator and to work with the public. And so I talked with her and she was amazing and my age and she also had her hair in a braid which was really exciting. And so I could have probably stayed in there for ages but we went to the beach and then we walked along for a little while but then the storm came in so I feel kind of bad because I kind of took a little while talking to the lady because she was really cool. And and hopefully you guys will see her on some specimen spotlights or adventure vlogs uh, if we get a chance to go on the tour because that's the ominous rumble of thunder coming in but I have my tea and then Chips' family has their coffee and everybody's on the back deck and I'm on the front deck because on the note of finding my people who also love nature and love being out in nature and here all of the people at the Conservancy stay as interns who stay in a dormitory. So they're really dedicated. They stay for like half a year to a year just living in the dormitory and doing research and giving guided tours and doing their studies here and that's just amazing. So truly my people. It was really fun. I should make all sorts of like little dormitories areas through the world of zoo crafting and put that in that would be really cool but anyway on that note everybody else is drinking coffee and that's perfectly fine with me I have my tea and I get comments every day going Siri what happens when you're the only person who enjoys nature stuff and animal stuff and cares about bugs and you get bullied you just go your own path and you hold your head high and you just grow the happiness you get from those things because that is what's going to give you the strength to be able to go forward and do the things that you enjoy even if it's different from what everybody else is doing and I'll talk more on that in the future because I think it's a very important subject but basically I sincerely believe that if you focus on doing the things you enjoy then you'll get so much more out of life and I don't mean like in a hedonic, like hedonistic <laughs> What a hedionic what? I don't mean in like a self-indulgent way where you're like, oh, you know, just do what you enjoy, don't work hard. I mean in the way where you're just honest and true with yourself, and I wish I had done that years earlier, but I'm okay with it because who knows where my path would have led me then, and I'm very happy with where I'm at now. But enough on that. The whole point of that ramble is that everybody else is drinking coffee and nibbling cookies. I have my peach tea and whelk shells. So... I'm about to crack open these whelk shells and see if there's anything inside. I am hoping for tiny baby whelks, and if there is something inside, then there'll be adventure vlogs and specimen spotlights over on the main channel for you guys to enjoy, and if there's nothing inside, you're about to see my disappointment in a few minutes. So let's see what's in here. <laughs>